Welcome to our channel. Today we're going to be sharing how we made this huge coffee table for our living room. Pretty easy to build. We built it in about four hours. Cost us about a hundred bucks. Yeah, um, it's pretty budget friendly I'd say. Yeah, but just hurry up because lumber is going up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll show you how we made it. Let's get started. Let's do it. We first made a trip to Home Depot and grabbed some 2x4s and one MDF board. For eight dollars, we better get the perfect board. It's got to smell right, dude. Mm. We chose to go with MDF for the tabletop since it's way cheaper than buying plywood. Here's a list of all the supplies and tools we used to make this coffee table. First, I lay out my 2x4s and I measured and marked 40 inches. Tony then used our miter saw to cut a total of eight pieces. This will make up for most of our frame for the coffee table. So I googled this and Google actually says that the average coffee table height is 16 to 18 inches. We decided to make our legs at around 17 inches in height. We were using 4x4s for this and because we have a small miter saw we couldn't get this with like a single cut so Tony kind of had to flip the 4x4 over to complete the cut. This actually worked way better than I was expecting. I would have sat there measuring it out for probably a few minutes, but um, Tony just went for it and it worked great. We got a total of four of these for the legs and we were ready to practice. So since we weren't sure if the screws would line up because we were using a Craig jig, we kind of did a dry run to see if this would work. It's actually really solid. Nice. You want to try breaking it? I'm joking. <laughs> Next, Tony used a Craig jig to make pocket holes on all the 2x4 pieces. We actually had this Craig jig for a few years already. We've used it on so many products. You could get them at almost any local hardware store or I think Amazon sells them as well for around $15. Tony lay out four pieces of 2x4s and we started by securing the legs to them. So these screws that Lily got this time, are really nice because they when they when they butt up against the wood they just stop but these screws they're good too but they work like a log splitter and they start actually splitting the wood when you screw it in so actually these hold it way tighter and that's the difference and these are sold right next to the Craig J's these are just regular construction grade screws We then attached all the top pieces as well, just by simply holding the 2x4 in place while Tony secured it with screws. We also decided to add the center beam for more support since the MDF we got wasn't like super strong. Okay, next Tony sanded down the top to make sure it was flush and smooth and it was ready for the MDF. We then lay the coffee table on top of the MDF and I traced an outline of the tabletop on to the MDF. Tony then cut it down to size and we lay it over the table and secured it with some brad nails. Our table isn't 100% square, so we made the top piece of plywood just a smidge bigger and then we're just fine tuning it with sandpaper. Okay, here's how it looked like at this point. This only took us about three or four hours to do. It was really quick. I feel like the painting process took me way longer. I decided to use the bare paint from Home Depot. I went with the darkest color swatch I can find and I used the finished eggshell. Before painting the table black, I actually used Kiehl's primer and did a coat of that. I let it set for about one hour before applying the black paint over it. After applying the first coat, I actually noticed that the top where the MDF was ended up looking a bit rough. I think it needed to be sanded before um, painting or priming. So I actually just sanded it down at this point and I've applied two more coats of black paint after. Okay, so because MDF tends to get ruined pretty fast, I was kind of worried about this. So I used um, a gloss clear finish over the top just where the MDF was. And because I still wanted like a matte look, I went ahead and applied paint over it again and added some of this furniture wax just for mild protection. Okay, so styling the coffee table actually turned out to be a challenge. I surfed Pinterest for ideas, but wasn't really set on anything. So I kind of went to a few stores. I went to Hobby Lobby and picked up this vase that I was gonna paint white and maybe add some cherry blossoms and then like this round tray, but I just wasn't feeling it. 
I stopped at Walmart by chance and actually found this super cute planter with some thyme in the herb section. I thought it might be cute together. I also got this basket at Hobby Lobby that I thought would be cute and they have these super cute big candles there as well. And then to finish off the look, I added our Bibles in there. Okay, so when we finally decided on making this coffee table, I knew we needed a rug to match it. Um, we actually collaborated with Laloy and I got this olive charcoal rug from them. Um, you can find it on Amazon. It's got like the prettiest olive green neutral colors and I feel like all the darks tie in super well with the coffee table. The biggest concern we definitely had with this table was the size. It measured 47 inches in width and length and only 17 and a half inches in height. We were thinking it might look a little bit too bulky and like overpower the room, but we love how it brings the whole space together. We don't regret making it this big at all. This phase ended up giving the room so much character and I love how simple the thyme looks against everything else. It's not like super floral, super colorful, it's just neutral. I think that's all we wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully you found this helpful and now you can make your own coffee table. Pretty easy, you can do it. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.